Welcome to a new episode of Buford and Sons, featuring me, Bill Buford, and my twin sons, our cinematographer, George Buford, whom you will never see, and our director, Frederick Hawkins Buford. And Buddy, eating our lunch bread. Today, we're making ratatouille. No! <laughs> Today we're making ratatouille. There you go. Nice. Classic end of the summer French preparation, which in the best description I've heard, is basically what every French household could conceivably be growing in their garden, anywhere over France. They're not really exotic vegetables, they're just basic summer vegetables. And they include onions, zucchini, eggplant, tomatoes, and pep peppers. I was about to say, in roughly equal quantities, like two or three onions, two or three eggplants, two or three zucchini. Um, Did you forget to get peppers? I think we have to get some peppers. That's all because you didn't get peppers. It's true. Mommy used my peppers. No one cares. That's on you. Unprofessional. Do you have zucchini as well? Yes. We're back with a bag of peppers. The most important concept I learned for cooking a ratatouille. Why are you staring at the vegetables? Because I'm about to talk about the vegetables. I'm talking to the vegetables. I'm talking to the vegetables. Secret essential tip to making a ratatouille. Don't cook them one after the other in the same pot, but cook them separately, one at a time, preferably with slight variations in cooking method. When I made it for friends, they all went, wow. What makes it so good? You have friends? I have, I have sons and friends. But what I like to do is to roast the peppers and get a kind of jamminess. And they have a quality which I think is essential to the dish, which was once described to me as like vegetable jam. So as I'm putting it together, I'm trying to think, I'm creating the height of summer expression of vegetable jam. What I do with my peppers is I put them in a hot oven gather them all up, put them on a tray with olive oil, heat the oven to about 350, 370, 375, and after about 30, 35 minutes, the skin will start to be coming off and the pepper itself will be cooked. You don't want the pepper to cook too much because then it starts to dissolve, but you, want, you still want that fruitiness of the pepper. And sometimes I'll fold it in a piece of aluminum foil so that the steam helps the skin come off. And after about 30, 35 minutes, and the pepper itself will be cooked. You don't want the pepper to cook too much. Next, the tomato. My preferred tomato is an in-season, juicy Italian plum tomato because the flesh inside has got that kind of jammy quality. You could use the heirloom tomatoes, but they don't they don't roast as well, and if you're gonna use them, I would just add them cut up and fresh at the end. But these, it's that plummy, fruity quality that, that we're trying to get. So to skin a tomato, the fruit, a little bit of a head start by just giving it a little slit here. Dipped into hot water, that little slit will start to come off. Then when it looks like the skin is coming off, then you dip it in ice water and work your skin loose. Do you think heating it up actually made a difference? Yeah, it did. I could have left it a little bit longer, but this one's completely coming out. So then when we have our naked, skinless tomatoes, then we cut them in half, remove the seeds and some of the, some of the pithy stuff. Save it, because it's full of tomato water, and tomato water, once it's drained, will be an essential ingredient to our ratatouille. In fact, it'll be the only liquid source. Ratatouille. Yeah. See, you can do it. Thank you, Frederick. I feel, I, I feel so encouraged. Thank you, Frederick. And then it goes into a slow oven, much slower than the one for the roasted peppers, about 200 degrees on a pastry sheet, which we've prepared with olive oil, a sprinkle of sugar, a sprinkle of salt, a little olive oil over the tomato, and 
hour, two hours later, and we have a plummy, juicy, roasted tomato. As it happens, I just happen to have some roasted tomatoes that I made last night. Slowly roasting all night long. Plump, juicy, jammy. <laughs> Next, we're gonna do our three remaining vegetables, our onion, our, our zucchini, and our eggplant. And these are gonna be done differently from the tomatoes and the peppers. And that difference also helps to accentuate their, their difference in the mouth when you finally have your Rita Ratatouille. The onions, I'm gonna chop quite simply. We had a family summer holiday in North Carolina a few years ago, and I made this dish. But I was in a rush, and I went to the supermarket. I said I did all the things right, but it just tasted awful. So we threw it away. Went back the next day, and we found some farm stands. We got all the same ingredients, and it was stunning. This dish is so essentially a dish of the summer. Think of the season for fruit, but actually it's a fantastic season for vegetables as well. Next, our eggplant, which we chop up more or less the same size as our onions, but we begin by peeling the eggplant. I'm peeling the eggplant because the skin is usually inedible. The eggplant is one of these just wonderful, wonderful vegetables that is rarely understood by most people who cook it. If you don't want to marinate it, you just got to give it time, make sure it's cooked through, and it develops this kind of wonderful, almost nutty flavor that's just fantastic in, well, dishes like ratatouille. Slice it up, and they're going to be basically the same size as our chopped onions. This is an eccentric experimentation. I barbecued a whole bunch of eggplant. Most of it, as you can see, got pretty toasty. And I'm just adding it to the mix. It's already cooked. It doesn't need to be sauteed. But in the expectation that it'll be, it'll be introducing a nice smoky flavor. Oh, that's nice. Ooh, that's a black one. That's toasty. Finally, our zucchini, which I'm going to cut into quite large wedges and add only at the very end. It's going to be the opposite of a stewed vegetable. This is the thing that's going to be with a little crunch. You really messed that up. Oh, you know, this is not a fancy dish, really, and it's, uh, it's okay. Next, we begin our sauteing process, starting with the onions. We have a hot pan. A little bit of olive oil, uh, just a little bit of salt and pepper. Cooking it enough to take a little bit of the bite out. You think you're really cool, though? No, because I'm doing it with my right hand. If you're really cool, you do it with your left hand. Oh, great smell of a new season fresh onion. It's fantastic. You don't want it to brown. The idea is that this, like the other ingredients, will effectively be cooked by the time you mix them all together. So they, they retain their, their identity and characteristics as an ingredient. I'm going to lift the saute pan and drain it in a colander. Next, the eggplant, which I'm going to do in a nonstick pan without olive oil. But then once it cooks for a bit, I will add some olive oil a little bit but it just does soak it all up. So it's, we shouldn't get the sizzle and snap of a, of a pan with heat in it. It should be almost impossible to overcook eggplant. So season it, salt, pepper. This, we give this a bit of time. Another one. Lost another one. No, 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 Fred, no, no. It's it, it's tea time. Finally, our zucchini. Hot pan, olive oil. Ooh, sorry. Flat. A little salt. 
thyme, and fennel. So I'm cooking this until they're just barely cooked. They should be brown, but still firm in the middle. Yeah, it's like one, two minutes. This is my tomato water. I'm very proud of my tomato water. It loves it, the label. Uh, two, tomato water, reduced, very strong. And this is gonna be the only liquid that we're adding to our ratatouille. We're gonna warm it up. Finally, we're at the point where all our raw ingredients have now been rendered cooked. We have our onions, we have our eggplant, we have our zucchini, we have our tomatoes, we have our peppers. In addition, that we will be adding later, when we're all done, a splash of red wine vinegar, because it is so fruity it needs a bit of bite. We'll add a little bit of fresh garlic. At the very end, we'll add some basil. And because I can't help it, when something is sweet, I also want something salty, I mix in some olives. The assembly begins. We start with our tomatoes, roasted, beautiful, from last night. Just slice them into bite-sized pieces. Everything is about the same quantity as everything else. Grab a couple more. It's kind of the heart of the dish. Actually, everything here is the heart of the dish. Next are peppers, obviously at the heart of the dish. Then I add our onions, yummy, sweet, at the heart of the dish. Our eggplant. Johnny. Juicy. No, kind of chocolatey and smoky and full of otherness. And a little bit of these barbecue ones that I had. At the very end, for that crunch, I'll add the zucchini. I am adding my reduced tomato water to my cooked ingredients. And I will simmer this slowly for 20 to 30 minutes. And then we will have it tonight for dinner. Okay, after half an hour, I added some zucchini, I added my olives, I added a splash of vinegar, and I think we have a delicious dish. And it's ready to plate. This is our dish. And uh, I add some basil at the end to give it that summer punch. It's smelling beautifully fragrant of, well, just about everything. It's, um, it's hungry making. Jessica's Wine Pairings. Welcome to Jessica's Wine Pairing. Jessica, <laughs> what are we drinking with our ratatouille? <laughs> <laughs> You're a bully. Welcome, once again, to Jessica's Wine Pairing. Jessica, what are we drinking with our ratatouille? Ratatouille, I'm so excited. I'm so excited about this wine pairing. I thought hard about what would go well with ratatouille, and I thought, because I know it's one of your favorite dishes. Oh! <laughs> I knew you'd like that's it. That's one of my favorite wines. Yeah, right? Yeah. So, come to you. Because like ratatouille, it's very fragrant, it's rich, it's summery, and it smells like flowers and peaches. And I think it's gonna be perfect with ratatouille. It's so pretty. Are the olives unusual? Uh, you mean are they normal? Mm-hmm. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's gross. That's really good. Yeah? Yeah. 